Welcome to another episode of IBJJF q and I'm your host, John Medina, and joining me today is Hall of Fame member, four-time world champion, European champion, Brasileiro champion, the general, and newly promoted to master Fabio Gurgel. Master Gurgel, how are you doing today? Very good. Very good, John. Thank you very much for having me in this show. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Great to hear. Let's get started then. So um, I'd like to start off this interview by saying this, you know, just as a little headliner, as a direct analysis of your entire career from what I've been following, I think the best overall theme of this interview should be about leadership. You know, you're one of the greatest leaders in jujitsu. Most of the community knows you as the general, you know, you don't just get that name for nothing. Uh, I'm not just saying that because of the accomplishments you've had in the sport, but also these outside successes you've managed to achieve. The jujitsu community can learn so much from you. So the first question I want to start off with is kind of, uh, you know, going back to your early adulthood, you know, you've accomplished so much in jujitsu and fighting at that time. Then throughout your life, you kind of level up, you know, you seem like you weren't content with just being a fighter or jujitsu practitioner. You, you just keep kept leveling up. So you went to become the leader of the most accomplished team in jujitsu with Alliance. And you've trained and molded so many amazing champions from Gabby Garcia to Bruno Malfasini, Lucas Lepri, Michael Lange, Sergio Moraes, the list goes on. <laughs> then you've created one of the strong- to put the list because you always forget somebody, you know? So <laughs> yeah, I have to. I never okay. mention the names because otherwise the guys get upset with me, you know? <laughs> I have to leave it open-ended because oh, there's so many more. My name, name. <laughs> you know, there's, don't take that there's so many more. And, and then you've also created one of the strongest networks in the world with Alliance. You know, you guys reach throughout the entire globe, but now you've kind of turned into this business mogul and you're focusing on helping others achieve their goals. Um, you know, we always say we learn so much from jujitsu and fighting, but I really think that you can attest to that. How did those early beginnings of fighting and the lessons you learned on the mats help with the evolution of who Fabio Gurgel is today? Wow. First of all, thanks for the compliments. And um, yeah, to, to answer that question, I really need to go back to my early, you know, starting jiu-jitsu when I was 15. Actually, I started jiu-jitsu with 13, but I had a moment when I had 15 talking to my father. Actually, my father was talking to my brother. My brother is almost four years older than me, and he was doing engineering in the, in the university. So they were talking about, you know, his future and, and you know, the workplace and everything. And, uh, and I was just sitting on the couch, you know, listen to them. And then all of a sudden, my, my father turned to me and said, hey, tell about yourself. What are you going to do when you grow up? And I said, jiu-jitsu was my first answer. And he asked me, you know what size jiu-jitsu market is? And of course, I didn't have any idea. And, and said, look, the jiu-jitsu model is pretty small. Do you think you can be good enough to have a spotlight in this world? Mm. And of course I said yes, but I didn't have any, any idea what I was talking about. But I grew up uh, with that hammer in my mind. I need to be really good in, in order to, you know, to be able to make a living out of jiu-jitsu. So I tried to be the best a uh, competitor, competitor as I could be. And then I tried to help my, my, my master in, in his classes and know how to teach to be the best professor I could be. And then I understand that if I want to teach jiu-jitsu uh, for a living, I need to know how to manage my school. And then was the first, you know, obstacle that I really faced because we didn't have a benchmark in jiu-jitsu academies, you know. Mm. Jiu-jitsu wasn't, wasn't a business, you know, uh, in a business point of view, you know. It, is, it was a business, but not really professional. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have any benchmark to, to try to get an idea or copy or whatever. So I tried to, to find someone to help me out. And I went to the fitness world to understand how they uh, became so big, 
you know, because I remember in old times when I was living in Rio in early 80s, the, the fitness academies were pretty small as Jiu-Jitsu Academy were, you know. And then all of a sudden they were big, you know, huge business. So what these guys did in order to change, you know, uh, uh, the business that they had for what the business they have today. So I started studying that and I hired one guy that was, you know, an angel in, in my life to, in order to teach me how to manage my school. So then I became a, a good instructor, but also a good manager. You know, I really understand what you need to do in order to become successful in, in your academy. Mm. And once I got that, I said, okay, what should I do now? And this is something that we, we learn in Jiu-Jitsu. You need to, you know, you need to share what you know in order to evolve, right? Mm -hmm. if, you, if you go back to, you know, to the mat, uh, when you have someone, some partner that you train with every day, and you get that guy in the same on board that you like every training, and you don't teach him how to defend, what happened with you is that you're gonna get stuck in the same place because you don't need to evolve, right? Because mm -hmm. it's easy for you to get that role and get the guy in the same arm bar every time, you know, you train with. And um, so with this concept in mind, I say, man, if I share what I know with others, it means that I'm gonna force myself to keep evolving. And at the same time, I'm going to give them the chance to understand how jiu-jitsu can really be a good business. And in doing that, we're going to have more people uh, raising the bar in, in jiu-jitsu world. So more academies gonna going to get more students. So our community is going to get, you know, a different size. It's going to be much bigger. Mm -hmm. And I, I really believe if the jiu-jitsu community uh, let's say 10 hours from now, be the double size, my position, of course, will be much better as well, you know? So in the same time, then helping the community, I'm going to help myself, you know? And that's the, the, the things that I, I really believe. You don't, it's not something that you're doing based on some kind of altruism. I'm doing this because it's good for me in the first place. You know, if jiu-jitsu grows, I will grow. Mm -hmm. You know, and so how can I help jiu-jitsu to grow? Sharing with people what I know. So that's how I understand jiu-jitsu business and, and the way that I see I'm still uh, contributing to the community. Yeah, yeah, and that's a, that's actually the perfect segue for for my second question. You know, uh, let's talk a little bit now of what you're doing. Um, what's really interesting to me about this is you're basically helping people do what you did. You know, going from a fighter to a successful gym and business owner. Can you explain to the audience mm -hmm. what you're doing in this? Um, you know, is it equally as much a passion project as it is a business venture? Uh. It is, as I said, uh, first of all, something that I, I really believe that benefits me. Yes. Right? So uh, it's something that I believe I can build and help others to do the same. So as I said, uh, uh, since I start sharing uh, the ways to manage the school, I kept evolving myself. Right? And... But you mentioned something that's really important, being an athlete and then a professor and then coach and then gym owner and then, you know, leader of the team, there are transitions, right? And what is important to understand is that you need to be prepared to do those transitions. Mm -hmm. So you cannot be that specialist. That is, that is one book that I read a couple of weeks ago. Uh, from Dave Epstein, uh, I think in English it's called range. So it's basically going against the, the 10,000 hours rule mm. 
when you say that oh you need to you know to be really specialist in something in order to be good so this, this he came out with uh, an, an idea that no of course you have to dedicate yourself and put a lot of energy in something but you need to have different sources of knowledge you know you cannot just be blind and do just one thing mm -hmm. so if you bring this to 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 jiu-jitsu to what you think uh of course you need to to put a lot of effort in order to be a world champion let's say right but if you just focus on that when you end your career what are you gonna have right probably nothing right so during this time when you are putting a lot of effort uh to become a world champion you should understand the technique in a way that you are able to teach so you should be able to, to understand the technique from the student's point of view not yours in order to make that technique uh comprehensible for your students that are attending your class mm -hmm. because one thing is oh you were able to apply that technique. This is one thing. You can be a world champion doing maybe three or four techniques really well, but you are not able to teach if you just know how to apply and you don't really understand the technique, you know, uh, and how you, you, you build the technique and the fundamentals of that technique. So you really need to understand that in order to teach. And then you become a really good teacher very nice but it doesn't mean that you are a good manager so you need to start studying how to manage your business mm -hmm. in order to make your business profitable because the importance of making your business profitable is that you can stay longer doing what you love otherwise you need to move out and do something else in, in order to make a living Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I see when I start, you know, Michael here as a as a professor, as a teacher. Uh, I I usually look up to the generation ahead of me. What these guys are doing, they are doing well. They are still teaching, and I I could see that most of the guys who are doing something else. They are not doing jiu-jitsu anymore. And then I thought to myself, look, that's not the road you should take. If you keep doing what these guys did, you're going to end up in the same place. So I need to do something different, you know? So I need to understand my academy in a different way, you know? So instead of uh, having students at this post, of the master i start to treat my students as a clients you know i'm there to to provide them the, the service I could since the very beginning of my you know journey as a as a jiu-jitsu owner mm -hmm. academy owner you know so uh that takes me to a different place once i have a profitable academy more people wants to be close to me, maybe to to learn the jiu-jitsu that I knew, but also to to get a to get a way to become successful mm -hmm. doing jiu-jitsu, and that's exactly what we did. We start opening the doors for our champions to to make their living in the same way we did, you know. And then after that, I said, man, I need to share with this with the community in general. How can I do that? You know, so we started to develop all the, the, the info products that we can, of course, reach more, much more people. And um, so with Verde Jiu Jitsu and then Tatami and Negocios are two management courses to help people to really understand Jiu Jitsu as a business, you know. And this is, of course, take me naturally to lead the team and in the position that I am today you know, uh, uh, a head of alliance and trying to help our affiliates to to do the same and get the same success in the academies as well.
Yeah, that that's a uh, that's a really great concept. I, I really like the idea of, you know, helping others and everyone grows, and then and then we all can can get to a, a bigger, better place. Uh, where can people reach? Um, you know, if they wanted to learn more about how to um, you know build their build their business, how can they reach? Um, do you have a website or? Yeah, we can, you, you can go to allianceofficial.com, which is our, you know, website from the association. They have all the info products there for the manage, management courses and also our methodology. We, we share with the community also uh, the first part of our methodology. Mm. Because one thing this is very important, if you, if you look at the jiu-jitsu today, I, I, really, I, th I really think that's a really important issue. We cannot go against the modern jiu-jitsu and the evolution, the technical evolution of the art. Mm. But in the same hand, we can, on the other hand, we cannot uh, forget the tradition and the self-defense aspect that, you know, because this is what made jiu-jitsu so efficient, you know, as a mortal war. And when you look to the, to the society, and most of the people that could do jiu-jitsu, they most likely they go for the self-defense aspect or, you know, for jiu-jitsu as a hobby, not to be a professional athlete. Mm -hmm. Professional athletes is for very few. Right? So you cannot lose that link. So it's very important when we share the methodology, the idea is for for the instructor say look you can go there if you if you didn't learn that because you start jiu-jitsu in 90s for example or, or after that you you didn't have a chance to learn self-defense and the way that jiu-jitsu was you know taught at that time and this is a very important thing because this is the foundation of jiu-jitsu right. so sharing the methodology we give people the chance to get and study, you get some material to study and make your class better for the beginners. Once you get your class better for the beginners, your for the beginners, your your academy is gonna grow. You're gonna have more students, and out of more students, you can pick those ones that you know you'll be able to compete in the highest level. But if you try to turn your academy just for competitors, you're gonna shrink. Uh, uh, the number of students that can attend to that class because, of course, the jiu-jitsu is going to be, the class is going to be really hard. And, and a regular guy can, can, can handle, you know, the jiu-jitsu in, in, in that level. So start to kick out the students. And this is really bad for the whole, you know, organism that we're talking about, you know. So sharing the methodology is really important for people to understand how to run the classes and how to provide the, be the best service possible to the students. Yeah, that's another great point that you uh, touched on was that, uh, you know, right, the methodology, it's, all, it's important to grow and to evolve, but to also ma maintain those roots and to, to make sure you, you have sort of a uh, outline of who you are, you know, at the end of the day of, of what, what you're really representing and, and the martial art, right? And keeping that, that um, core value right so yes. so that actually um kind of leads leads on to the next question as well one thing that that is really really cool about you and that i i really liked when i learned was that you have this really openness and curiosity to always constantly learning be learning and um you know you even created a, a youtube channel where you interview this wide range of people from actors to world-renowned chefs to fighters, of course, and then to business and marketing specialists. Where, where did this willingness to always want to learn, especially from outside sources, come from? Uh, I would say uh, jiu-jitsu taught me a lot of that, you know, because jiu-jitsu is an endless process of learning, right? Nobody's never good enough in jiu-jitsu. So you need to keep learning in order, you know, to evolve. You know, in jiu-jitsu, if you stop, let's say, for two years, and when you go back to the mat, jiu-jitsu is completely different, you know? So it's, it's, it's a, the constant evolution. And so we, I learned that from jiu-jitsu from the very beginning, 
And as I progress in life, uh, I need to, to know other things, as I mentioned, to, in order to manage my school or to, to you know, how to treat my athletes. You know, how, how could I have so many world champions under the same roof at the same time how can we control their egos so you need to study you know and get different examples for you know other sources you know in order to to succeed you know and then when you go for a business aspect and then man this is, then then again is endless what you you need to learn in order to have a successful business you know we are Again, with uh, a really new business model in Jiu-Jitsu. As you mentioned, Alliance is one of the, you know, uh, two or three top associations in the world, you know. So we are still learning how to do that. We're still learning how to provide our, our affiliates a better service because the relationship cannot be like, oh, you're going to be Alliance because you are my student. No, you're going to be alliance because I'm going to provide you something that you cannot do alone, you know. And uh, so we are still uh, uh, figuring out the best way to do it. And, of course, you cannot stop learning, you know. Y you should keep doing that forever, I think, you know. Uh, the day that you, you think you, 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 you know enough, you're already behind. Mm. Yeah, that's that's a very good point, point. Um, and th that's that shows why why you guys are where you are. And um, I'd like to leave you with this last question because because of all the stuff you've been you've been kind of talking about with the business. Um, you know, every time I see a Fabio Gergel video or a post, there's an entire library of books. I'm surprised there isn't one right now. But no, actually, a... we just we just moved to the new office. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, this week, actually, you still putting things in place, you know. So I have on my back just the, the, the belt that I put on the frame with uh, one of the pictures that I like most, the final of 2000 World Championship. And uh, so we are still organizing things. Probably you're going to see a lot of books around here as well. So the books are coming. The books are coming. <laughs> of course. Yeah. So I, I know you're always reading and you're always sharing with your audience, you know, the, the current book you're reading and what's really you've learned from it. But, um, you know, uh, I would like to know what are, what are your three favorite books that you would say had the biggest impact in your life? And, and for what reasons do you think uh, they did? Yes. Uh, reading uh, has been, uh, you know, one of the most important things on my daily routine. You know, I decided a couple years ago that I would stop watching TV and I would put that time in books. So, of course, I read a lot of books before that. But just to give you, you an idea, when I start doing this, uh, I had at least two hours of reading every day. Mm. You know, so it in average is about a book a week. You know, it turns to more than 50 books a year. Wow. Yeah. So that's a lot of content, a lot of knowledge that you can get from the books and against nothing that you get from TV. Right. So if, yeah. I, if I can get you guys uh, advice, I would say stop watching news, stop watching TV and wasting your time and get a book to read. <laughs> Uh, and with so many books that I ever had, uh, it's hard to find two or three books that create a lot of impact. Mm. Because every book, you get something really important, you know, that even though you, you read a book that, oh, this is not really a, a strong message, but there's also always something that you get from that reading, right? So uh, what I prefer to give you is three books that I think that every jiu-jitsu practitioner should read. Great. You know? Yeah, I, I love that too. <laughs> because uh, I, I read different things, 
right? I go for the classics. I just read Ana Karenina from Tolstoy. I, I like to read Dostoyevsky. Uh, I'm reading now a biography of Martin Luther King. Mm. And I have a lot of business books in the middle of that. You know, some philosophy. I like the Stoic philosophy. So it's not really about the books that impact my life. But I think it's going to be uh, better if I give you, our audience, some books that jiu-jitsu people should read. Okay, great. You agree with that? A hundred percent, yes. <laughs> so the first one in the list uh, calls The E-Myth from Michael Gerber. Mm -hmm. Basically, what he says is that being a technical uh, artist, or let's say you are you, you know the technique, you know you are the technical part of the operation, it doesn't mean you know how to manage your business. And you need to understand that because it's not just, oh, I, I'm black belt, I'm good in jiu-jitsu, I'm going to open the door, and a lot of people are going to come to, to learn from me. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. So right. you need to understand your business from inside out. And you need to create your business in a way that one day you can step out and your business is going to continue. So the Emet is one book, the number one in my list for jiu-jitsu practitioners. Great. I'm going to add the, the link to all one, of these, by the way. <laughs> yeah, the second one that I like about is from Simon Sinek. Uh, it's like, you know, the guru from you know there's a lot of videos about him on the internet he posts a lot of business tips but he has a book that calls infinite mindset and is again uh really important because when you have a goal let's say you want to be a world champion in jiu-jitsu and everybody that competes uh in a way they have that dream but then let's say you get it let's let's say you put a lot of effort thousands of thousands of hours and you'll be able to get the world championship one day what's next if being a world champion is your main goal means that you have a finite mindset it's something that as you get you have no more goals in front of you mm -hmm at least no one that you thought before how can you build something that gonna last more than you you know so when i think about lines it doesn't mean that i'm gonna you know uh one day there are, of, of course i won't be here one day uh but i hope what i'm building is gonna you stay for much longer, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm not building something uh, that depends completely on me. I understand that I'm an important part of this, an important piece of this now. Maybe I will be in the future. If I'm building something that is going to make that thing possible, you know, even though I'm not here anymore. Right? So Simon Sinek, uh, The Infinite Mindset, is my second one and the third one is a very old book i read this book many many years ago is how to make friends and influence people from mm -hmm. dan carnegie with daniel carnegie mm -hmm. which is a classic in uh, in a u.s library and uh you know guys sold like millions of millions of books and this is really important if you want to know how to treat people in you know and it goes to your student it's go to your competitors it's go to every single person you do business with you know so i think that these three books are really important for the guys that want to you know make those transitions uh, it's something that you can start reading now and maybe you're going to use in your future. You don't need, you know, but of course you can start to apply these, these books. Funny because, uh, uh, when I was reading this book, I had a situation, uh, that put myself 
I put myself in a situation that exactly what the guy was telling me in the book in that time. Mm -hmm. I said, you know what? I'm going to try and see if this strategy works. <laughs> and I did exactly what the guys were suggesting me to do. And the result was like unbelievable. Wow. You know, I said, you know what? I, I'm going to try to to pay more attention, you know, to the advice the guy is, doing, is giving me on the book. And I reread this book a couple times. And uh, I think it's a really important book for everybody to read, you know. Yeah. Uh, and of course, if, if people want to read more about other subjects, they can reach me anytime, you know. I'm happy to, to share with everybody what I'm reading, you know, and important books about, you know, the philosophy that I like, the, you know, polit political thinking that I have and everything, you know, I'm completely open to share with everybody what I'm reading. Yeah, that's, that's uh, one thing that I've learned, you know, I'm definitely going to read those books you just, uh, you just recommended. But even when I go on your, your Instagram, and I look and I see the books behind, I've, I've picked a few out and I've read them, like right now I'm reading the E-Myth. Uh, and uh, hey, man. yeah. Oh, hey, man. And, and since this quarantine, you know, I've read about seven or eight books. So I've, I've uh, really kind of tried to take on your, your leadership and see uh, how these books can help me. And, and they really, really have. And, and it's, really, um, it's really great to see. And I, and I really appreciate you for, for sharing those and showing those books behind you because uh, you may not realize it, but it does influence people all over. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah. You know what? Uh, it's something that if you put that in your routine, your daily routine, it becomes a habit, mm -hmm. you know? And once it becomes a habit, you're gonna be much closer to success, you know? Because that's what success requires, you know? You need to, to create a healthy habits, you know, in your life, not just for your body and for your health in general, but of course, for your mind and, you know, and for everything you wanna do in life, you know? So uh, reading is one of the, I wish I could start early uh, the amount of hours I'm putting in, you know, but it's never late, you know. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's never, never late. late. Yeah. Well, uh, Master Fabio, I really, really appreciate this incredible insight. It felt like a, like a college course almost. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'd really like to thank you for all that. And uh, before we go, is there any final thoughts you want to leave everyone with? Uh, I think we, we, we talked about it in the very beginning, you asked something about leadership and, uh, one, one thing that I, you know, understand in order to be a leader, uh, is, is being honest, you know, and, and someone that the people can really trust mm -hmm. because this is something that you cannot, you cannot Tell people, they you're gonna trust in somebody else. You know, there's a feeling, you know, right? Is is a is a is more related with emotion. So you really need to to gain to earn that trust. You know, in order to earn that trust, you need to be a reliable person. You know, and talk the truth. And talk the truth sometimes is hard. You know, saying no to someone. Uh, is, is most of the time not an easy task, but exactly, but it's exactly what leaders should do. You know, the worst decision that leaders can take is don't take the decision, right? So you, you need to do something that you really believe that what make people follow you, you know? And once the people start following you, you need to show them your dream, your goal, and convince them to join you in that project. And then you come comes back to the to the infinite mindset. If I have a dream that's bigger than me, it's much easier for me to put other people on the boat. Because one day I need to step out, and who's gonna be the leader? You know, so you create, you know, chance for all the people that believe in what you believe to continue the path. And I think there's, you know, 
extremely important if you want to to lead is you know be honest be transparent be hard when you have to you know but above all bring people to share your dream with you you know once you if you were able to do that then you're gonna become a leader you know otherwise if people don't trust you you can't afford them to trust you know and even though you have the guys in in hierarchy uh, below you it doesn't mean that the guys follow you you know mm -hmm. it's a different thing mm -hmm. you know one one thing is being a boss the other thing is being a leader leader is someone that people wants to follow and boss is just the guy that pay my my paycheck mm -hmm. you know so you need to to try to become a leader and it doesn't matter in where you are now you can you can have a, a, a leader attitude, you know, since the beginning in your career, you know, and that's what's gonna make you, uh, you know, gonna make you able to bring more people to help you out to achieve your dreams. Man, great words to leave this uh, interview with. Uh, thank you so much, Master. Um, till next time. <laughs> Thank you, John. Thank you very much. Yeah.